from Menlo Park, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering CloudNow Awards 2020, brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Now, here's Sonia Tagare. Hi, and welcome to theCUBE. I'm your host, Sonia Tagare, and we're on the ground at Facebook headquarters in Menlo Park, California, covering CloudNow's Top Women Entrepreneurs in Cloud Innovation Awards. Joining us today is Mada Segete, the co-founder of Branch. Mada, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me. So you're receiving an award today for being a top female entrepreneur in cloud innovation. How does that feel? Feels awesome. Uh, I'm humbled to be in such amazing company with some great ladies that have started really great companies. So pretty excited to be here. Great. So just give us a brief overview of your background. Sure. Uh, my background. Well, I probably don't have the regular Silicon Valley background. I was born and raised in communist Romania uh, in a pretty small town called Baco uh, in a region of Romania called Moldavia. I was very good at math. Um, and my parents uh, pushed me to explore applying to schools in the United States, which I did. Um, and I applied to 23 colleges, <laughs> ended up uh, getting a full scholarship from Cornell where I studied computer engineering. Um, I dreamt of working for big companies, which I did for a while, uh, until one day when I remember I was uh, doing a master's at Stanford and one professor told me, I was, I told him, I was like, I don't think I could ever start a company. And he was like, well, if you don't, like, who do you think will? So I was like, oh, I never thought about it that way. <laughs> um, and that's when I think my entrepreneurial dream started. And a few years later, I started, um, found co-founders and started a few different companies that eventually ended up being branch. That's so, a long answer to your question. No, that's perfect. <laughs> so what inspired you to start Branch and how did you navigate getting funding? Um, it's a it's an interesting story. I think we came together, my co-founders and I, we were in business school, Stanford. We all want to start a company and we did what all business school students do. We just started something that sounded cool, but maybe it didn't have such a big market. Um, and uh, then pivoted and ended up building an app. So we worked on an app with a mobile photo book printing app called Kindred. We worked on that app for quite some time. It was um, over a year. We sold over 10,000 photo books. I've seen a lot of images of babies and pets and we reviewed manually <laughs> every single book. And we had a really hard time growing. So if you think about the mobile ecosystem today and if you compare it to the web, on the web, the web is a pretty democratic system. You um, you have the HTTP protocol and you are able to put together a website and make sure that the website gets found through social media, through search, to all these other platforms. Apps are much harder to discover. Um, the app ecosystem is owned by the platforms and we had a really hard time uh, applying. I was coming from the web world and all the things I had done to market websites just didn't work with apps. And it was hard, uh, you know, you could only ma market the app and how about all the content inside the app that's a lot more interesting than the app itself. So we, we felt that we were like really, really struggling and we needed to kind of shut the company down. And then we realized that one of the things that we were trying to build for us, to a disability to allow people to share and get to content within the app, which is in our case was photo books, was actually something that everyone in the ecosystem needed. So we, we asked a lot of people and it seemed like this was a much bigger need uh, than you know, the photo books. And uh, we had started to already build it to solve our own problem. So we started building a linking and attribution platform um, to help other app and mobile companies grow and understand their user journey and help build like interesting connections for their users. So, you know, our mission is to, um, to help people discover content within apps uh, through links that always work. Uh, and it, it's been a, a wonderful like, and a pretty exciting journey ever since. That's really inspiring and, and solving a real world problem. A real world problem. So it's interesting when you ask about fundraising, uh, it was so hard to raise money for the photo book app. And, and we raised actually from uh, a, a pair ventures. And they actually, even now I remember uh, the guy, Pedgeman, sat us down in a very Silicon Valley fashion at the Rosewood 
and it was a very hot day and there was like Persian tea being served and he gave us money. He said, you know, I just want to tell you something. I'm not investing in the idea. I'm investing in you as a team. Uh, and if you pivot away from photo books, you know, uh, which we did. Uh, and I think we pivoted away because we ended up finding a much, much bigger problem. And we felt that, you know, we could actually make a, an actual change into the mobile cloud ecosystem. And that's how that's how it all started. Uh, and it wasn't actually it was easier to raise money after we had a really big problem. We had a good team that had been working together for all, almost two years. We had product market fit. So. Uh, so yeah. So what are some things that have influenced you in your journey to become an entrepreneur? Um, some things interesting. Um, well, I would say the Stanford Design School. Um, I think I came from working for Siemens, which is a giant company, and I started doing these projects. And I remember one of the projects was we built um, and uh, a toolbar. We were supposed to, we were doing a project for um, Firefox, which, you know, Mozilla, Mozilla's browser, uh, which was in some ways the precursor to Chrome. And we we're trying to help it grow and we didn't know. And, and one of the ideas was we would build this toolbar for eBay and eBay hadn't had a toolbar for Firefox. And we, you know, we were some students for two weeks, we built this toolbar and then someone bought a card through our toolbar. And I was like, wow, like the, how incredible is it that you can just kind of put your thoughts on something and just get something done and make an actual impact on someone's life. And I think that's when the spark of the entrepreneurial spark, it was during that time that um, Michael Deering, who was a professor on one of my D school courses, also told me the thing that if, if I don't do it, who will? Mm -hmm. And I think that's when, that's when it all started. I think the things that have helped me along the way, I mean, my co-founders, I think I've been incredibly lucky to find co-founders that are incredibly good at what they do and also very different from me. So I think if you think about why many companies implode, it's usually because of the founding team. We've been together for almost seven years now uh, and it's been an interesting way to find balance through so many failed companies, so many stages of growth, branches over 400 people now. So you know, our roles have shifted over time and it's been like a, an interesting journey. And I think recently more in the past few years, I think one of the things that has helped me find balance has been having a group of female founder uh, friends. Um, it's really interesting to have uh, a peer group that you can talk about things with and be vulnerable with. And I didn't have that in the first few years and I wish I did. My co-founders are amazing, but I think in some ways we are also co-workers, so having an external group has been incredibly helpful in helping me find balance in my life. So I think a lot of women feel that way. They feel that it's really difficult to navigate in this male-dominated workspace. So what advice would you give to female entrepreneurs uh, in this space? Yeah, I mean, it is really hard. And I think confidence is something that I've noticed with myself, my peers, the women I've invested in. I do investing on the side. Uh, I would say believe that you can do it. Uh, believe that the only the sky is the limit. Believe that um, you uh, can do more than you think you can do. I think sometimes, uh, you know, our, our background and the society around us um, doesn't necessarily believe that we can do the things that we can do as women. So I think believing in ourselves is incredibly important. I think the second part is making sure that we build networks around us. They can tell us that they believe in us. They can push us beyond what we think is possible. And I think those networks can be peers, like my female founder group, we call each other feministas, or uh, I think investors. Um, I think it can be mentors. And I've had, I've been lucky enough to have amazing women investors, uh, women mentors. Um, and it's been really incredible to see how much they helped me grow. So I think the interesting thing is when I was getting started, I didn't look for those communities. I didn't look for, I, I just kind of felt, oh, I can do it. But I didn't actually realize that being part of a community, being vulnerable, asking questions can actually go help me go so much further. Um, so the advice would be to start early and find a, a small group of people that you can actually rely on and they can be your advocates and your champions. So, yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for those words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you for being on The Cube. Thanks. I'm your host, Sonia Tagare. Thanks for watching The Cube. Stay tuned for more.